When I was serving my brunches inside my secret kitchen at Eastern Market on Saturdays, this was one of the most popular things that I offered. See, I used to have on my website a menu that you would have to order things, but you couldn't order things right away. There were some things that required you to order them like 24 hours, 48 hours, sometimes even a week in advance so that I could get the ingredients to cook these special things for you. And since this takes about an hour or so in the oven, I would ask for about a day's worth in advance so I could gather ingredients, get it all set up, cook it, and have it be fresh and ready by the time you got there. The first thing you're going to need is a clay pot, and you can easily find a Japanese donabe or a Korean tolsut. Either of those would work just fine for this purpose. In fact, I'm using a Japanese one right now. For some reason, the Chinese ones are harder to find out here in Michigan. Now the goal of any good clay pot rice is to always have that scorched crispy rice at the bottom, so to make that easier, I just like line it with a, just a bit of cooking oil before putting in the rice. It's just a personal preference, but because I believe that the rice is the star in clay pot rice, and that means you should be able to season and flavor the rice as much as you want. That could mean using superior stock as your liquid base, that could mean using a maki cube or chicken powder mixed in water, which is what I'm doing here, as well as perfuming the rice with some star anise, some bay leaf, and some toasted cumin. The other beauty about clay pot rice is that it is completely customizable to your tastes. In my case, I just like Chinese sausage and pork belly, but you can add in chicken, you can add in mushrooms, you can add in beef tendon, which is absolutely delicious when cooked in this rice. One classic preparation that you can find in some Hong Kong specialty shops is short ribs um, cooked in with this stuff. It is absolutely delicious and a little more difficult. I like using these cured meats because you literally just toss them in at different points of the rice cook and then they're all set to go. I didn't do it in this video, but if you crack an egg for like the five minutes after the rice is done and put the lid back on, the lid retains heat so that it cooks the egg from both sides. So you have like a perfectly poached egg cracked on top if you wanted to do that too, which I highly suggest you do because eggs do make everything better. Another thing that I should have done was I messed up the order in this a little bit. I should have added in the rice and then the sliced sausage. It would have just mixed a little better and made for a less messier setup. Obviously it didn't make that much of a difference, but for your sake, just remember this rice, sausage, water, spices. Cooking this in the oven is a little unusual. Traditionally it's done over a flame and turned constantly. It's actually a bit of a skill in itself to do, but we work with what we have. And as it turns out, ovens are a pretty adequate substitute to make this at home, which is something that you don't see very often in Asia, so win for us. Using the oven also gives you the benefit of having more space to cook with larger bowls. Back when I was running my shop, I had one clay pot that was able to accommodate up to 10 people just for one bowl. It had held like 16 cups of cooked rice or something. That was the closest thing I had to a party platter. I remember you could fit like eight duck breasts on that thing. This is some cured Chinese pork belly. It's the closest thing that we have to bacon. Uh, slice them up and then give your goodest girl a taste of it before washing your hands and going for some green beans. Having a shop dog in your studio kitchen comes with a lot of guilt. I cut up and I make a lot of things that she's unable to eat, so I keep a bag of green beans in my fridge. And obviously, looking at the way she looks at me, we both know that it's like not the same, but it's the best that I can do and it's vet approved, so um, Sorry. This side quest is meant to work with the current dish. We are going to make a spiced sweet soy sauce. You will need light soy sauce, dark soy sauce, cinnamon and star anise, allspice and white pepper, a big thing of ginger, and some rock candy. Also some Chinese wine if that's available to you. Rock candy is just lump sugar. It's just like unrefined sugar. You can easily find it in Chinese grocery stores or you could just use regular sugar or a low calorie sweetener like erythritol, which I had said before is really great for this application. The process of making a spice soy sauce is very, very easy. Basically, you're just cracking all your spices and then pouring them into the soy sauce, mixing it with sugar, and then just like what you're aiming for is a taste that is balanced. It is sweet, it is salty, it is flavorful, it will hold all of those beautiful aromas from the spices. And you can use this as a topping sauce, you can use this as a cooking sauce, you could use this as a dipping sauce. It's super versatile. Now this is where I messed up a little bit. I um. I miscalculated how much rice goes into these personal ones. I used two cups of rice instead of one cup of rice. So it ended up to be like 
totally full, leaving me with no room to put the pork belly in. So I ended up having to make this again, which is actually great because now you can see the whole process done again in one quick clip. And then seeing it done this way, you realize it is not at all that hard. Wait, let me, wait, did I, did I do it? Come on. See, I did the order right this time. No, what am I doing? Sausage and then water. John, come on, you are a professional. I had COVID during this time. I was recovering from COVID. This, I, I'm, I'm gonna chalk this up to COVID brain. This had to have been COVID brain. The oven time and temperature, by the way, is 375 to 400 degrees, depending on your oven. First, it's for 25 to 30 minutes, and then you open it up, and then you do another 20 minutes back in the oven with the pork belly on top. I will say that this, this is still very beautiful though. Because I really wanted to maximize the chances of having crispy rice, I lined the sides of the bowl with some sesame oil and then actually put it on the stove top to crisp up the bottom on the inside. This is a little bit of a higher risk skill. You run the risk of burning the bottom of your, of your rice more easily. Just keep your nose very in tuned and like pay attention. So like there's a difference between toasty smell and burning smell. And that's what you're looking for. Now the pork belly doesn't need as much time to cook. And actually what we're trying to do here is line the top of the clay pot with the pork belly. And as it continues to heat up and cook, the fat will render off of the belly and then absorb into the rice and then finally settle at the bottom where it will crisp up the rice even more. I experimented with this one a little bit. I tried with both pork belly and sesame oil in this one, whereas I tried the other one with just sesame oil. I did not find it necessary to have both pork belly and sesame oil. In fact, it was a little bit too oily. So use one or the other in the case of pork belly versus sesame oil. But if you're not using pork belly, then definitely use sesame oil. Because of how flavorful and substantial this dish is, it could easily be served as a standalone meal paired off with the spiced soy sauce, or it could be served as a side. The beauty of using the oven method for making this rice is the fact that you can just do all your prep work, put it in the oven an hour before dinner time, and then by the time everything else is ready, this thing would have been waiting. Rice also does a really good job of retaining moisture over the course of time while in the clay pot, so even if you have it done beforehand, and you can turn the oven down to warm, keep it warm, and the rice will still be fluffy and moist by the time your dinner is ready, even a couple of hours in advance, if you get your timing a little off. You didn't think I was gonna talk over that, did you? Like, everybody needed to hear that. That was so good. So the rice on the bottom was crispy, the rice on top of it was fluffy. It was, that was especially delicious. A little too oily, admittedly. Could have done without the sesame oil, but otherwise delicious. Other pairings I really like, shiitake mushrooms, bok choy, a poached egg, duck breast, and when tomatoes are in season, I'll come back and do a summer vegetarian version of this. That one is really, really good. 